guys, it's Angel and David here, and we're going to start a series of vlogs about worship culture. Yeah, we're super excited to dive into these talks with you about worship culture. Um, specifically, our hope and our goal is that as you watch these videos, whether it's your church or whether it's here in our church, that you can connect with Christ in a way through worship that you've never connected with Him before. Mm -hmm. That you can unravel your purpose and, and have a true revelation of what it means to worship the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Yeah. And so today we're going to start the series of vlogs about um, worshiping God like He's the only one in the room. That's good. And so to start this conversation, we're going to go into Jeremiah 32, 39. And it says, And I will give them one heart and one purpose, to worship me forever for their own good and for the good of all their descendants. I love this scripture because it talks about how God gives us one purpose and one heart. This is the kind of desire that God gives us. And it talks about in verse 40 that God has birthed this desire within us to worship him. That God said, I am going to give them a desire. Meaning that when you were born, God already birthed this desire in you to worship him. This is why we were made, is to worship the Lord. So before you were even Christian... God already put the desire within you. It's just something that was lit up and lit on fire. And so understanding today, whether you're um, a person that works in a dentist office, whether you're a doctor, an accountant, um, whether you're a school teacher, or maybe you're a pastor at a church or at our church here at Heart Revolution Church, understanding that God gave you a desire to worship him. That, that the before we even dive into the making sure that we worship like God is the only one in the room, we have to start with the why. Yeah. We have to start with the why we worship yeah. Him. We were created for yeah. worship. I love the imagery that you said, like like we're His reflection. We're, we're made in the likeness of Him, and so we're supposed to reflect His glory back to Him. We're just supposed to be like mirrors. Like mm -hmm. We realize how amazing He is, and that it's, it comes onto us, and we're mirrors that just reflect it back to Him. That's yeah. why we're made. That, that's so... So beautiful. And I, I I think, too, understanding that we were made for this, it could be difficult because we find ourselves in, in church worship services mm -hmm. or, or even like worshiping at home. And it's easy to get distracted. It, it's so easy, especially for me, mm -hmm. leading worship, I'm sure for you, too. Yeah. Like, it's hard to sit in a worship service and and just focus on God. Even though this is why we created it, I feel like it's so difficult. I'm focused on the sound, I'm focused on the people next to me, or I'm thinking about like, uh, what am I gonna eat after this? Or I'm like, yeah. my, my brain's all over the place. Is that, is that hard for you too? Oh yeah. I mean like, let's, I mean, if we're all honest, like let's not be like, you know, feeling like we're all over here, okay? <laughs> like you're human, I'm human, yeah. David's human. We have thoughts, we, we have mindsets where sometimes we trail off and, yeah. But if we go on to the why we worship, if we if we can just make sure that we focus on that, all those things tend to fade away because um, we're focusing on why we do what we do. And it's again, it's not to say that all those things of you know making sure that the sound is correct and making sure that you know the band is playing the right things and that we're playing the right track and that the singers are singing the right keys, like those things are all so important. Like we don't want to we don't want to um, disregard that because. It is true. We want to give God the most excellent worship that we can because he is deserving of it. But also I know that our God is so much more concerned about our heart and so much more concerned about our spirit for worship than the talents that we give off in our worship. And so just remembering that, like when we are, are looking at our worship sets, when we're looking and we're, and we're coming into the church to worship, or you're, maybe you're worshiping in your home, whatever's around you, don't let those distractions take you off of of looking at Jesus while you're worshiping. The whole reason why we do what we do is Jesus. And so if we can just get to that why, if we can just build that foundation for ourselves, we can make sure that we stay in that lane, that we stay on that purpose, that one purpose, that one heart um, to worship him forever. Yeah. I, I think, think that's a, so important. a perfect example of that mm -hmm. is, is David in the Bible, King David. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking earlier about how he worshiped in the streets pretty much naked and the people around him like like if we saw that in our worship service what would it, I mean, the security would be like um take him out please like, uh, yeah i wouldn't be able to worship if there was a somebody in their chonies like right in front of me but it was crazy like you were saying earlier that um that god looked down on that and he was pleased and he was glorified and because it was 
it was David's focus and it was his aim to please God and to worship him like he was the only one in the room. Yeah. And he truly exemplified what it means to worship like God is the only one in the room. Yeah. yeah. And I think in that, he, from what, when I see the image of David, I see him like stripping off the things that maybe made him feel comfortable. Other things Ooh, that gave good. him like that outer beautiful image. Mm -hmm. And he kind of stripped all those things away so that there was freedom in his worship to worship God. There was this freedom of not having to worry what people thought of him or what he looked like. But it was just like, I'm going to give God the best of me. I'm going to over rejoice in what he's done. And so I think even in our worship, understanding that I love our, our purpose for worship and the why, but also understanding that Worship is a time when all the focus is off of us and 100% on Jesus. This is the one time, yeah. like not even in preaching, but the one time that, that we take all of the focus off of ourselves and wholly and completely on Jesus. Yeah. And that obviously has to start with the why, but I feel like David is such a, a beautiful representation of that, that he stripped off everything of himself and focused purely on Jesus, did not care about what people were saying about him, what his wife was saying about him, the bitterness that was in her heart. And he was saying, you know, what? it doesn't even matter right now. I'm going to give God my best. I'm going to give God the best of me, whether I look crazy or not. And sometimes we have to make sure that that whether we're in our room with by ourselves or in our living room with our family or maybe in a church service in a huge sanctuary with lights and cameras and people standing right next to us, that we're giving God our best and that we don't worry about the people around us and what they're thinking or, or what they might say, but focusing solely on our divine worship to yeah. Jesus. Now I want to clarify. We are not saying come. that you should come to church in your chonies. Please, Please don't. don't. Um, they're going to be like, Heart Revolution Church said that they we They said come I can come in my chonies. No, no, that's no. not what we're saying. Please. Um, but spiritually speaking, as you're speaking, this verse came to mind. It's from um, Hebrews 12. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, yeah. who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Mm -hmm. it, this picture of, of Jesus being seated, seated in the throne and, and us running towards him, it reminds me of uh, a few years back at a conference, we had Andreas Corsa, and he came to, and he spoke to us about this image of us running on a path towards Jesus. And um, he painted a picture of distractions in our worship time. He said, it's almost like if you're on a path and there's these tree branches and mm -hmm. as these tree branches come, mm -hmm. he said that anything that obstructs your view of the throne room of God yeah. is a distraction and it's a form of an idol. Those things that as we're worshiping in service and we're singing, Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> you make the darkness, or whatever we're singing, as we're singing those things, those thoughts that pop into our head are forms of idols and they're distractions. So if, we're, if I'm worshiping and I'm thinking about oh, my bills, or mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm thinking about um, uh, you know, the cute girl on stage or whatever, you know, <laughs> people think about all these crazy things. If I'm thinking about mm -hmm. work or I'm thinking about home or um, uh, if I'm distracted, those are forms of idols, and we need to cut those down. We need to deal with those immediately because they obstruct our view and they obstruct our why, yeah. like you were talking about, starting with the why of our worship. It's important. Yeah. It's imperative, people, that we are not distracted in our worship. Yeah. Um, a beautiful picture of not being distracted in worship as well, uh, a few books back in the Bible is, is John chapter 12. There's a story about yeah. Mary. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary's this lady that um, she has a pound of expensive um, ointment and she lays it down at the feet of Jesus and she starts wiping his feet and she uses her hair to wipe the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now she had every right and every reason to yeah. probably be distracted. She, she was there for a feast of the Passover. There was 14 of her best friends there, but instead she chose to worship Jesus. Yeah, and I want to believe that all those distractions weren't even, she wasn't even phased by it. I know yeah. that you talked about even Judas saying like, Mary, what are you doing? We could be selling that, that perfume. Mm -hmm. we, could, we could be making money off of that and giving it to the poor. Like, why are you using that on the feet of Jesus? And like you said earlier, I want to believe that she didn't even, she didn't even hear I'm Judas, phased. that she wasn't even worried. Like she wasn't even phased by what he was saying or what any of the disciples were thinking, but she was solely focused on Jesus. And I think that that is such a beautiful image of tying this all together, of, 
of making sure that that he is our why of making sure that when we worship we mm-hmm. worship like he is truly the only one in the room mm-hmm. not he's the only one and then maybe another person but mm-hmm. that god truly is the only one in the room and um, we just hope today that this this conversation that yeah. these series of vlogs are just going to touch your heart that um, they're going to grow your spirit for worship and we just hope that you love this video. We pray that you would subscribe on this video, um, like, comment. If you have any comments, questions, or maybe you have a topic that maybe you want us to touch on in worship, please put that in the comments. We also want to hear how maybe you worship like God is the only one in the room as well. Um, please comment, let us know what you think, and we hope we see you next time. Thank you for watching.